Good morning, everyone. It is so good to see you guys again. It is Friday the 14th of April today. Uh, happy Good Friday. I don't know if Good Friday is actually supposed to be happy, what with the fasting and the thinking. Um, but Happy Good Friday. And Happy Passover. And um, in our house, we celebrate the Easter Bunny. So Sunday is our day. <laughs> Um, got some stuff to talk about. It's been a few weeks. I'm trying to get back on a schedule, but so far it just hasn't happened. So, but today's a good day to, to uh, record because everybody's gone for a couple hours. So, yay. We are just uh, on our first week back from spring break. Ooh, spring break. I finally joined the uh, army of moms who are like, oh. And didn't go anywhere but we will be going someplace in a couple weeks so good times had by all I'm gonna grab my notes mm. and we're gonna get right to it as, as soon as I find my notes don't rush me okay I had two finishes I really could have organize this a little bit better but I didn't so you know me and my bag under the desk I had two finishes this month very exciting indeed indeed my first finish is from the just cross stitch ornament edition I think it's 20 I don't know 2008 yes 2008, it is called um, Scandinavian Reindeer. There we go. Scandinavian Reindeer by Norwegian Stitches. Or is it Scandinavian? It's Scandinavian Stitches, and it's called the Norwegian Reindeer. I even looked at my last video and still can't get it right. Scandinavian Stitches, it is the Norwegian Reindeer. It is from the 2008 um, Ornament Edition from Just Cross Stitch. And I don't have a picture. I mean, I could sit here. <gasps> That's pretty. Stop looking at things. There it is. That's what it looks like finished. You saw this the last time. And this is what mine looks like finished. I stitched this on that 30 count Irish linen that I had just purchased from 123 Stitch on Clearance, um, which was Irish wasn't, but 30 count, 30 count linen was what was called for. And then I used HDF silk, um, hand dyed fat fibers by Vicki Clayton. Silk, I don't know what silk it was. It was just, you know, plain old silk in oxblood. And I did one strand over two threads um, in the pattern it called for one over two using DMC. So I just switched out the silk. I like it. It kind of has a rustic look to it. I mean, it's not the best coverage, but I don't think it's really meant to be. It's cute. I say that about everything. It's cute. Of course it's cute or I wouldn't have stitched it. I really liked it. It took about two nights. Um, and then when I was all finished, I realized that at the bottom I had put four tiny squares instead of three. So everything lined up over on this side because I used like the deer and the stars to line everything up. But then it was all out, it was out like to here. And I was so mad, and I was like, I'm calling it done. I'm not fixing it. You know I ripped that out, and I fixed it. Of course I did. What has happened to me? So that was for um, the magazine, the monthly magazine stitch along that Heather Stitches and Cross My Stitch Susan put on in Facebook, and I will try to link it below. That is what I did. Right? Yes. Right? Right? It's like I did two things this month because this, this was also for that stitch along. I must have forgotten. Why did I pick this one up? 
I think I forgot that I had a finish because I picked this one up for the monthly magazine stitch along too. That is so strange. I don't know what's wrong with me. Okay, so this is Rose Ella's uh, needle book. And it's from Just Cross Stitch something. I don't know. I don't remember now. June 2016. It is stitched on 40 count vintage country mocha. Obviously, it's not FFO'd because it's going to be FFO'd into a needle book, which I showed the last time. Look at all those French knots. Oh, don't look too close because they might not look that pretty. No, those look pretty good. French knots galore. All the French knots. Would you believe this is only the second time that I have ever done French knots on a project? You wouldn't? It's true. It's true. Trust me. So I finished that. And that was very fun. And I just need to get some felt and make that into a needle book. And I'll do that never. Those are my two finishes. Uh, oh, no, I had three finishes. How did this even happen? Three finishes, you guys. Three. This one I just finished uh, a few days ago. I finished the Welcome Sal from Tempting Tangles. Let me get back so you can see it all. Oh, it's so pretty. There's so many things that I did wrong <laughs> in this, but it's mine. It's uniquely mine. I did add the year right there. I did not add my initials because I just, I couldn't find a place that I really felt like looked symmetrical and I wanted them. It happens. So, get up here so you can see those colors. Oh, a color genius Deborah is. Um, this is now, everything's been released. I'm not sure if you can still buy it. I'm going to say that you can. I don't know. There's, um, a Facebook group. I'll try to link her blog post that talks about it. I know now that it's finished, the Facebook group is going to close in a couple months. So if you're part, oh, there we go. If you're part of the stitch along, make sure you get all of your pieces because you paid for them. Um, yeah. This is stitched on a 25 count something from my stash. It's an even weave. Obviously my skills at, I don't know if this was like a scrap and I just chose it or if I cut it like this. If I cut it like this, I'm ashamed because I was so close on this end and then I have all this extra at the bottom. I don't know what was up with my math, you know, like Barbie, math class is hard for me. So there it is. 25 pounds, something or other, two over two, beautiful, I think I'm going to make it into a wall hanging, I don't, it, I, hi kitty, um, I don't see this being something that I would actually frame, but a wall hanging might do, so yeah, three finishes, three finishes, three finishes, three finishes, so exciting, I worked on some stuff, not a lot of stuff, but some stuff, um, I did on April 1st, oh, it's like tennis elbow, I don't, I don't play tennis. On April 1st, I started Coffee Quaker by Heartstring Samplery. And this is what the chart looks like. I am using oh, the charted threads. I am stitching it on 40 count Meadow Rue. I don't know who makes that. I got it on one, two, three stitch. Probably Lakeside Linens. That's what I'll say. The linen is really nice. I didn't get lots done, but I got some stuff done. So there it is. The coffee. There. Just the coffee. The coffee and those birds that I hate. And I had to fudge the flower in the middle of them because they're wrong. And that first Quaker motif. Well, I guess it's the second. Maybe the birds are Quaker. I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, there it is. I don't think... Well, I know that I'm not going to get to this until the end of April-ish. 
or nay. Because I'm working on other stuff. So we'll put that back. So that was fun. And then I worked on... I think I didn't even work on anything. But that's because I had those three finishes. I worked on those. Yesterday for Dark 13 Stitching, which I always forget to participate in, and I always want to, um, I worked on my Mill Hill Sugar Skull. I started this for Stitch Mania last year, I believe. No, not even. I started this for the... Olympics stitch along and it was the like triathlon um, start three things and I started three Mill Hill kits yeah that's exactly what it was I don't have very much done for it being like really old when were those Olympics were they in like January or something I don't remember this um this is as far as I am I was farther, you can kind of see up here where it looks a little dirty. I had stitched this all the way up and then real I realized someplace down here that it wasn't lining up right, but I couldn't find where and I was going to be a row short. And then I got all the way up there and I thought, I'll just omit that row, no big deal. But that still didn't negate the fact that somewhere down here I had messed up and I was going to have to compensate for that. And it was all the way down here I had messed that up so I had to take out all of this and then I stitched back up a little bit and then I started doing this over here um, and that's as far as I got yesterday because I got mad I don't I don't know what's wrong with me sometimes but I really enjoyed this I was kind of like uh, do I really want to work on this and then I got started and I really liked it. So I'm going to have to find a reason to pull that back out. Most deaf. And that's all my stitching. Can you believe that? That is all of my stitching that I did. I got a few things though. Not a lot. I haven't even done a lot of buying. I don't. I mean, that's good because stitch from stash, right? I got my fabric of the month. This is March fabric of the month, I believe, from um, Under the Sea Fabrics. This is 32 Jobelin in Iris. I can't even see. Oh, it's getting there. It's really pretty. It's very, very pretty. You know what might look good on this is my Blossom Goddess. I had a different fabric picked out for it because I'm going to start that never. But that's really pretty and that might be happening never. Never. I purchased my first hank of silk from Silks For You on Etsy. Now I have purchased from Dinky Dye Silks um, but never Silks For You. I don't know what made me decide to go out there and look but I kind of after that Carrie's thread issue with stitching bits and bobs. I, I was really kind of irritated. It's not Carrie's fault. Um, with my Quaker and I thought, you know, I don't know, maybe I want to do this in some silk. So I bought green silk to do my Christmas Quaker with instead of getting the 20 skeins of Carrie's Creation Cottons. Because apparently, according to Silks For You Etsy shop, this equals 20 to 30 skeins of DMC. I need 20 for my Quaker. And it's silk. And it was $3 more. Duh. And then I also, really I should put that back in the bag that I put a hole in. Good job, Trisha. I decided why not just buy the other silks to go with it instead of using the carries and that way it's all silk and how luscious is that I didn't notice this until just now she included an extra thank you silks for you lady 
So here I got the reds. I don't think they have colors or names. They don't. So I got the two reds um, and the gold. It feels so nice. And then she gave me a sample of the new premium silk. It must be thicker. I should read up on that in this gorgeous blue. I love silk. Thanks, man. Another thing that'll be started never. Maybe I'll start it around Christmas time. I don't know, it depends on how many Christmas things I finish, I guess. Um, that's not anything. That's not really anything. Is that all I bought? That's not bad. That's nothing. That's nothing. Oh no, there's something else in here. Oh, I got a gifty. I got a little gifty from my Stitch From Stash partner, Jill. It's still in this thing because I don't know how to use it and I want to, but I have kids and... They are like rabid dinosaurs on meth. I've said that a lot. Have I said that to you guys? I know I've said that out loud. Rabid dinosaurs on meth. So, Jill is fabulous and sent me some beetle on. I've never used beading thread before. Nymo. This is Nymo. Beetle on Nymo. Okay. And some beading needles, which are fabulous. Peacemakers. These are so long. You can right stab somebody with those. This cute little stamped bag. I don't know if she did that herself or not. Jill, you'll have to tell me. Very cute. She um, is starting to knit which I like. I don't know, maybe she's knitted for a long time. She's starting to knit more. Um, so there's a shared love because I love me some yarn. <laughs> but probably my favorite thing that she sent me is this little Ouija board <laughs> with this uh, moving, it's a magnet with this moving planchette. Is that what they're called? I don't know anything about Ouija boards other than, whoa, other than cute. Would you rather be stitching? Hello? <laughs> Hello's even on there. Yes. I don't know what to do with this. I want to do something with it, but because it has, yeah, yes. Because it has a loose piece, that'll be gone. So I can't use it for like a keychain. I don't know what to do with it. Jill, what do I do with this? Maybe I'll just, I will, yeah. Do you hear that? Or are you listening to my dog snore? Anyway, this is so cute. I love it. Thank you, Jill. You are the best ever. Look. Oh, she's right there. I'm, I need to find a new place to film. I know. I don't, I've never had anybody complain about Lucy snoring, but she is so loud and I don't notice it until like I'm editing my videos or uploading and I listen to them just to make sure that, you know, everything works and she's so loud. So that's it. That's it. That is it. Oh no. One more thing. I've knitted. I've knitted a little bit. I have been working on my weigh it show. Not a lot. Um, at night I've been, I've started rewatching The Office on Netflix, which is one of my favorite TV shows. I can't believe how inappropriate it is. It's nothing like the UK version, which I have watched like the first couple episodes several years ago and <laughs> was like, whoa. And I don't offend easily, but, mm -mm. But, uh, but The Office, the U.S. version, I really, really enjoy. And um, I didn't get on that bandwagon until they were several seasons in. And somebody I worked with um, suggested I watch it. And it was like our thing. 
And since I have been watching it, I let her know that I was watching it. And so she started watching it too. And then like we text each other every night and we're like, ha ah. <laughs> So funny. Anyway, so I'm just picking the dog hair off because Archer got a hold of, oh my God. Archer got a hold of this a couple days ago. Like he found the bag and pulled it out and brought it to me, the, the cake of yarn. And was like, yarn, yarn, yarn. But left my shawl dragging through the living room on the floor where it picked up every single dog fur that was on my floor, which is a lot. This is it. This is all I've done. It's really easy though. I'm going to definitely take this on vacation. I love this yarn. It's so pretty. It's so squishy. It's uh, Babs Yowza. I don't remember what the colorway is. I want to say that it was one of those that like you couldn't buy again. Is it like one off or something? I don't know. I don't even know where the tag is. It's not in this bag. It's so pretty though. Looks like a snag already. Of course it is. So there it is. It is fun. I like to knit while I watch TV. Um, I'm still not that fabulous of a knitter that I can knit and not look. I have to look, but that's okay. So tomorrow starts um, Jessie Marie's birthday sale. And I'm going to vlog. I'm going to vlog. I haven't vlogged in a long time. November for the uh, elections uh, challenge in Stitch Mania. So I'm going to vlog. How do you like that? It's going to be busy because we're prepping for vacation. So it'll be really interesting footage because I won't just vlog my stitching. I will probably take snippets of what I'm doing that day. Good times. So yeah, that'll be happening. I was going to show you what I was, I'm going to start with tomorrow, but I'm not gonna because I'm going to vlog it tomorrow. That's all I got. All I have. Stitch Mania is coming up, you guys. I'm really torn. I think I'm going to do seven things because I went through and I looked at the days I'm doing Stitch Mania are starting on May 17th, which is my birthday. So I'm doing the 17th through the 31st. Those were going to be my 15 days. I was going to do 15 starts and just every time I think about it, my eye twitches, I get an instant headache and I need to lay down. So I looked at all the things that I started during those days and the things that I finished and I finished seven things out of those 15 days from last year. So I thought, well then, I will just work on those things. A lot of them I haven't worked on in a year. Um, I'll just work on those things that I haven't finished and I'll start new things on the days that I did. Kind of like uh, Brittany from Blimey Cat Stitches did last year for Mania. It's my own version of Stitch Sania, as Stephanie from Lindy Stitches said to me. Join us with Stitch Sania. So now mine is just partly sane. So um, I'm going to do that. That is it. I'm also, I feel like there was something that I was going to do at the end here. Maybe it was my zombie story. Several of you were very curious about my zombie fear that I cut out of my last video. So I'm going to share it with you. So if you're not interested in hearing the stupidity in my brain, then bye. Have a great weekend. And I will catch up with you at the end of my first week of vlogging with Jessie Marie's Stitch Along. If you do want to stay, here's the thing. I've been watching The Walking Dead since I was pregnant with Axel, so it's been over five years. I think that they were already two or three seasons in. I want to say I was pregnant. Maybe not. Maybe he was already born. I don't know. I just remember... I was watching Netflix in my bed during a weekend. It was a night that my husband was gone somewhere. I was home alone with AJ at least. And if Axel was around, he was just a baby. 
And I started watching the first episode and it scared me. Um, I've never been a big horror person. Um, blood and guts doesn't bother me. Violence doesn't bother me. Um, things like the supernatural though, ghosts, demons, the grudge, the ring. Oh my God. I have a story about the ring too, but I'm not going to share that right now because I'm going to get off track. It's a really good story. Somebody should definitely remind me about that. <sighs> Um, those things scare me. And apparently zombies scare me too. I knew that I had a little bit of an uneasiness when AJ, you know, five, six years ago when he was just like nine, ten, started playing Plants vs. Zombies on the computer. Computer zombies. Not realistic at all. Plants vs. Zombies. I'm sure some of you know that. And I couldn't watch him play it because the noise that they made that, uh, and like the rain girl, uh, oh, oh, no, no, can't do it. Uh. My kids make that noise sometimes and I really just want to like squeeze their heads because I can't. So anyway, I started watching The Walking Dead. I actually, um... I got, it took me a whole season to get to where I wasn't terrified of them, but I would have zombie dreams, recurring zombie dreams. Um, kind of strange. I, the only other recurring dreams that I have is I have recurring tornado dreams and I've had them for 20 years. I don't know what sparks them. Sometimes they're not scary. Sometimes they're absolutely terrifying. Tornadoes, who knew? Um, now, if I watch something zombie related, I usually have a zombie dream, sometimes terrifying, sometimes not. So anyway, so I've watched these. I got pretty good with The Walking Dead. I was fine. Um, no big deal. But sometimes you just think, what if it were true? Like, what if it could happen? And I've seen some documentaries on, you know, widespread disease and how it could be carried through the air and how people, you know, how long it would take to go across the whole United States and then, you know, into other countries and air travel and blah, blah, blah. And that's kind of like, holy crap, right? So with the window, and it doesn't happen in the daytime, you know, like this, but once it starts getting a little dusky and especially when it's dark, I like to close all my windows, like all my blinds. I have shears, like you can see behind me, those are shears. I don't have anything else, but they can't be open. It makes me uncomfortable because people can see in and what if they're zombies? Swear to God, they could see me. And at night when everything is quiet, because in The Walking Dead, there isn't like a soundtrack, like a music soundtrack or anything. Like all you hear nature sounds usually. Um, so sometimes stuff like that will spark and I'll be like, that's really scary. And then I watch, um, and I, I haven't seen, I've just watched season one and two of Fear the Walking Dead, which takes place before Rick Grimes wakes up you know, from his coma in The Walking Dead. So it's kind of like where everything is starting and nobody knows how it happens, even though nobody knows in The Walking Dead either. But it's like in the very beginning where just people are starting to turn and they don't know and they're trying to get away. And for some reason, the zombies in Fear the Walking Dead scare me more than the zombies in The Walking Dead. I don't know. But that's when I started getting really nervous and like in one of the, in the first season when they're still at home in their neighborhood in Fear the Walking Dead, there's a little girl across the street from them and I don't even know the characters' names because I'm like not invested enough. There's a little girl across the street who's supposed to have a birthday party and like everybody is canceling because of this widespread thing that, you know, is making people sick. And she's crying in the front yard because nobody wants to come to her party and like, you know, the main family is kind of watching, you know, they're staying inside because that's what they're supposed to do. And I think maybe the military is coming in. I'm not really sure. And then like at night, you see the dad running around the house, chasing the mom. All, and it's like, ah, 
and they're looking out the window and it's dark out and that's what it is. That's my story. So I'm gonna end on that. Stay safe guys. Don't let the zombies get you. I'm gonna have a zombie dream tonight. I can already tell just by talking about it. Oh my God. Stay stitchy. I will see you guys soon. Happy Passover. Happy Good Friday. Happy Easter. Catch you next week. Bye.